What's up, Hightech Podcast listeners? So one of the things I've talked about a lot on the podcast at different times uh, that comes out that I'm kind of a nerd about and uh, really have kind of spent a lot of time over the last couple of years digging more and more into is project management and task management. Part of that's just been out of necessity. In my job and life situation, I have a ton of constantly competing tasks and priorities and complex issues that I'm dealing with. And so I needed a way to organize all of it. I was struggling to keep it all straight. Uh, even if you don't get quite as jazzed about task management and project management as I do, um, the reality is all of us in education and teaching have tons of different priorities we de- we're dealing with. And I found I needed a better system for not just tracking all of that stuff, but keeping track of it in the future so that if I needed to get back to a resource or something that I did uh, six months ago, I could do it and not have to try to remember where I stored it. I needed a centralized place for all of it. And it was this search messing around with tons of different apps and different methods and ideas that I eventually came across the concept of Para. So Para is a project management uh, method uh, that was originally developed by Tigo Forte in his book, Building a Second Brain. The book idea is all about how um, with technology and things that we're working on now, um, we have the ability to build systems for ourselves to not have to remember everything, every task, every thing that we're doing. It's basically this idea about building a system for yourself, whether through an app or something else where you can put down a task or a resource and then not have to commit active memory to that just to remember it, but that you'd be able to come back to it later uh, and work on it. Now, PAIR is an acronym for basically the different spheres or areas of our lives that we're dealing with um, that contain all the different tasks and documents and notes and uh, articles and things that we have to keep track of, right? And so PARA stands for, uh, the P stands for projects. This is one's pretty self-explanatory. It's just an idea that we're always working on confined initiatives that have a set of tasks with a goal and an ultimate deadline, right? So it's different than uh, you might have general chores and things you do around the house all the time. Um, you're always going to be doing them week to week. No, this is something like, okay, I have an initiative. I'm trying to build this thing by this date. And here's all the tasks and things that are related to that, right? Areas is different then. It's a sphere of activity with, uh, kind of that you maintain over your life, right? So in a work context, this might be administrative things that we all do, uh, that you can't get rid of that are just a part of your life. Uh, and then resources are pretty simple. This is the idea of, Uh, Each area or project that you're working on, over time you collect notes or resources or things that are ongoing interest to you that you don't want to lose. And so Para pushes for making an area for yourself of resources that you can go into and find and look up things when you need to, when you're remembering something and you want to try to get that idea or that article, creating a system that's easy to find that. And then archive is this idea that eventually you don't want to find that stuff again. You don't want to busy up the system you built with stuff that you don't need to come back to uh, on a regular basis. And so you archive it, right? So this is basically this idea of creating an area where you can put things into kind of like an inactive status of your life that you no longer deal with. Uh, so this is Para, cross it, uh, not because of actually reading T- uh, Forte's book, um, but because I was building out an idea, a system for myself in Notion and found somebody who built a template based on Para, and I really liked it. So I eventually, uh, in Notion, you can click on a link, copy the template that the person provided for you, and then build it on your own. And over the last couple of years, I've used that to and adapted it significantly to kind of build my own system based on Para. Uh, that I've found super helpful. So without further ado, I just want to take some time in this video just to share what I'm doing. Okay, so this is my Notion area. Uh, Will and I have referenced it a couple times in the podcast. Uh, Will busts on me a little bit about uh, how intense it is at times. So I'm going to give you just a real quick overview, uh, noting that like you don't have to go nearly as crazy as I did if you're looking to do anything in Notion. Uh, this has been built over the last couple of years. Before I jump too far into that, though, I want to talk about the three main areas of my thing here. So uh, you might recognize this from my little explanation of para earlier. So you'll see areas here, remember, uh, ongoing things throughout my life that have tasks and resources attached to them that I wanna look at. Projects are things with set deadlines, a set of tasks for with a major goal. And then my resources area where all my resources are. So just real quick clicking in my areas uh, spot here. When I click into here, basically these are all of the major areas that I, uh, in my life. Okay. Uh, I took some time setting this up, just trying to think through, uh, several of them are areas from work. Just like in my work, I have several major areas that I'm responsible for that are never going to go away. 
uh, that have constant tasks. And then this P area down here is just personal stuff like budget, family, uh, some other stuff I can work. You can see the high tech podcast is located right there. Um, and each of these pages are set up so that if I click into them, so let's, for instance, click into my instructional technology area, my job, um, without getting into too much of the detail about the database stuff, I think the main thing to focus on is in this template that you could download for me and the way I have it set up, I have a central database that has tasks for everything. And when I create a task in this area page, it's tagged to that specific area. And so if I open up this area page, I can see every task. Uh, I use status fields to track things instead of just check marks. Uh, but I know I have a coworker who took what I had here and has adapted it with just check marks. Uh, but I have statuses here and you can see every task that I have located here in this area. And then also I have a central database that tracks every resource that I have for that area in my second brain, right? So this has every note that I have, um, resource or research that I've been doing, documentation that I'm working on in that area. They're all located here in this database right under all the tasks, right? So this all filters back up to my dashboard, which I'll explain here in a second, but I can click on any of these areas at any given time and search the tasks that I have here, add tasks, search the resources that I have here and find them, right? So this is always tracking what's going on uh, in the areas of my life, right? The other spot here or a piece of para that I talk about is projects. So this is my project page. So much like my areas, if I click on my project page, it shows me all of the projects that I have going on. Now, I'll be honest, this phase of work that I'm working on right now is kind of busy. Um, and so I have a lot of different projects and not all of these are stuff I'm working on. Some of this is stuff that the team that I lead uh, is working on and I'm only just kind of involved to make sure I know what's going on. Um, now I have this all set up to do what's called a timeline view in Notion. Um, and so it tracks the start and end date of the project for me. Um, and these arrows are just tracking uh, what, Notion calls dependencies. A lot of project management stuff uses this uh, to kind of track that, like I have to finish this project to get that project done, right? So that's a uh, basic setup there for projects. If I click into each of these items, right? So let's go ahead and click into, I think this one, I've laid out a bunch of stuff here recently. Uh, this shows me this project's in progress. If I click into here, I uh, don't want to focus too much on here, but I might do a separate video on uh, a method of uh, kind of scoping out projects that I use that is on each of these pages here. So that's what this is. But then down here, just like my areas, I have all of the tasks related to this project and their status. If I click over here, I actually then also have a separate little timeline that tracks all of those tasks for that project. And then I have all the resources related to that project tagged here. So that's my projects area. The last area is resources. So resources, you notice, as I mentioned, both the project a page, a project page and an area page in Notion have a section for tasks and have a section for resources. This is the central database that runs that resources section on each of those pages. So when I go to those pages, I can create resources, track them down. But then many times in my work life, for personal life, I've needed, oh, well, I was working on this one thing one time, you need to remember it. And so I can actually come into here in Notion and just search what I'm looking for, right? So, uh, and find that note and just open it up and see the area. Uh, the other cool thing about Notion is that I can actually hit control P uh, and have a whole search area. So if I'm looking for like keyword searches, I can search that and it'll search all of the notes in my resources area to find it. Um, so I found over the years that this has really helped me keep track of things um, and just not lose stuff. I was losing track of tasks sometimes or forgetting to write things down. And I've just kind of gotten in a habitual practice now of always putting everything in this parasystem in Notion, in my dashboard. Uh, and this thing has helped me remember things. It helps me get to tasks on time uh, and uh, manage stuff. Now, last thing I want to talk about just real quick, this is the thing I kind of added on to the template that the guy created. He originally had uh, the Paris stuff built out, but I added what I call my day. So this is a dashboard. Uh, I'm not gonna go into all the details, but I have a ton of custom filtering set up on this that I've developed over the last couple of years. And basically what it does is it brings up any task uh, that is due today or I set as a priority. Um, and what it does then is brings it up on this my day. And so what I'll do each day uh, and each week before I start my day and before I start my week is I'll click on this timeline option that I've built here that shows me all of my tasks 
uh, for the next two weeks. So it'll show me everything, timelines I've put together, all that stuff. And I'll just kind of look through here and see when things are due. I use this view to also kind of workload manage through week to week, uh, making sure that I'm not planning out too many tasks in one day. Uh, and then I'll use this to kind of look through things like, okay, I want to work on this task. So I'll set it to priority. Um, and then this all comes up to this priority area. Uh, this then all comes to this my work day. And then I've also built on top of Para this idea of time blocking. So I time block my day. Uh, I have different blocks that I've set up and I have little uh, time options here. So I kind of work through that and figure out, you know, uh, I'm working on this 1230 to 130. Um, and I use these time blocks to kind of get a feel for how much I can get done in a day. Um, and when I start to get behind, I can notice at the end of a time block, I'm getting behind in the day. So I'm going to have to shift some priorities around that day to get stuff done. Uh, and so this dashboard has been an absolute life saver, saver each day. So that's my para method. Um, I hope you like what you saw, um, or you've learned something from here. Feel free to hit us up on Twitter if you have questions. Um, and also, uh, there will be a link on the Twitter post that's also popping up in the video now, um, that goes to my template for everything that I've built here. So, uh, if you don't want to get into building custom tables and things like I did here, uh, I've already pre-built it for you in a template that I share with people. Uh, so you can click on that. And if you're using notion, you can actually duplicate it into your own notion space and build it out for yourself. Um, or if you're not using notion, highly recommend trying out notion, getting an account, and then, uh, you can use my template or break it apart and use pieces that you want to use, whatever you like that templates there for you to use.